Brightspace Lab is a lab here at Simon Fraser University, the School of Interactive Arts and Technology in Surrey. And the main idea of the lab is really to combine virtual reality with cognition, perception, and interface design research. So we're basically using immersive virtual reality as a tool to study how humans behave, how they think, how they operate, especially how they move through space, what kind of sensor cues we need, so visual cues, auditory cues, physical motion cues. So it's basically a research tool that enables us to do experiments under tightly controlled conditions, replicable and so on. And then what we do with this fundamental knowledge is basically try and use it to improve not only our understanding of the underlying mechanisms, but also to improve the interfaces, the human-computer interfaces. So uh, right now we work on a couple of different projects. Uh, one is uh, quite interesting in that we collaborate with architects together to really try and improve the way we present the buildings that they have not yet built. For example, in a design review, when the architect designs the building but then has to show to their colleagues or to their clients, how do you do it so they get a more intuitive sense of being in this building and especially moving through it? And so this inspired us to see how far we can go with just improving the interface and the visualization of the way we move through these environments. So we've been working with Perkins and Will to look at how architects can actually use an immersive virtual reality interface for use in their practice to improve their process, to improve the quality of buildings, to improve client outcomes, to basically make the built environment a much better environment for everybody involved. One thing we used is basically a, a motion chair. It's basically manually operated, so there's no motor or anything needed, just some sensors, so we equipped, uh, it's called a swapper chair. So the idea of the chair is really that you just kind of lean in the direction you want to go. It's quite intuitive. It's almost like you're sitting on a really comfy joystick. So if I want to go forward, I can do that. But at the same time, I can still have a conversation with Jake or the architect, uh, the stakeholders, whoever that is. If I want to turn, I go sideways. And I can also go uh, sideways around a certain spot, so I kind of pan around it, which can be quite useful to get the, the shot we want. Just looking at a computer screen or just looking at a small uh, physical model, you, you don't really get that experience. You have to imagine it. You have to convert in your head, okay, what would it be like for me to be here? But when you're using something that is much more direct, more immersive, um, such as the tools that we've designed, these, these tools really give you uh, a, a, an experience that you just couldn't get before. It's becoming much more feasible. You're seeing the release of really low-cost virtual reality displays such as the Oculus Rift that make it incredibly affordable to use and, and to buy. And you're seeing many more architecture firms actually using building information modeling um, processes that in the end produce a three-dimensional model that can be used with something like the Oculus Rift. So the architects that have tried this system are very excited about using it in their process and also their presentation. They, they found it to be an incredibly intuitive and um, really immersive way of moving around the environment. And they're really looking forward to seeing where they can use it and possibly building upon it for other tools such as an immersive modeling tool in which they can gesture and move walls in real time. And also just for, for presentations when they really want to use their hands and get very involved with their, with their uh, communication. So what I found when doing this project was, was I really understood the, the SFU Student Union Building in a way that I didn't before. I was looking at plans, I was looking at some renderings, and I really didn't get the building. But when I was moving around in it, when I was looking around in it, when I was really operating in it much like I would in reality. I understand the building much like I understand the building that I'm in right now. And that was really amazing to me and really supports this idea that virtual reality can completely revolutionize the way that we design buildings, that we understand buildings. It really has the, the potential to change the built environment that we're in and, and make the world a better place.
for me, that's exciting, uh, not just because of the designing, but also the research that underlies it, because you have to combine all the different aspects. And that's also one of the visions I have for the lab, is basically combine the different expertise and approaches to really be able to create something like that that is, is truly amazing.